Buddy boat for the trip. We got Connie, we got Scott, we got Michael, we got Mason, we got Casey. We made the crossing. Look at that water up on the bank now. We still got a pretty long ride ahead of us, but there's our buddy boat over there. Way out there, you probably can't see him on the GoPro. That water is gorgeous. I can promise you there will be some diving on this trip, but we're over here for a fishing tournament. Give you more about that in a little bit. So we still have a long ride ahead of us. We're gonna keep moving, stopping for some food, stopping for a drink, and uh, next stop, Spanish. Just pulling into Spanish right now. We're gonna clear customs. We lost our buddy boat, but we got another buddy boat that also lives by us. So beautiful, windy, but beautiful. We got some stuff to show you here. Camera ready to go. <laughs> Customs has been cleared. Maybe, maybe me and Joey should try that golf cart. We got a golf cart, we just checked in. Got our stuff put away. I'll show you a little bit of the scenery here. This is kind of the easy day. We might do a little bit of fishing. Well, I know we're gonna do a little bit of fishing on the on the dock. We'll show you what that looks like. Got some tennis courts. What was that? I think that was a snipe. Rough ocean out there. You can see the waves breaking way out. Yesterday was the warm-up day. We checked in, hung out, messed around the boat a little bit, but now everyone's doing their thing. Everyone's getting ready to dive. I got my fancy headhunter suit that I haven't worn since I was in the Bahamas last time. A little one mil, super comfy. We're gonna go ahead and get all geared up, grab the spear. I don't know if I'm shooting the pole spear or the sling, but we're in some relatively shallow water. And we're looking for some hogfish because we, we want some hogfish for dinner. Here we go, my very first fish of the trip, and it was a nice Nassau grouper camouflaging in all these reef and fans. And while Nassau's aren't definitely known as being the hardest fish to hunt, they definitely are a tasty fish. He started to swim away, but I lined up a shot with the headhunter gorilla sling and got a really nice solid holding shot on him. I went down, untangled him from the reef a little bit, and that was my first fish of the trip, and it was proving to be the very first fish of many, many good fish to come. from the surface I saw a fish tuck up under this ledge you can see that little hangover right there and as you get closer you'll see him playing peekaboo with me a nice hogfish and that's what we're there for we really like these hogfish I don't get the opportunity to hunt them at home so here we have a solid female hogfish we want the big males but uh, we'll definitely take some of the females especially early in the day to be the first fish to kind of get something in the boat make sure we get one so again I hit him with the gorilla sling a really solid shot and I swam down to him and brought him up to the surface. Really quickly, I pull that spear out. I always try to do this, brain the fish right away. Puts them out of their misery, makes it safer for everyone in the boat, and uh, secures your catch. What you got, boo? Here you go, grab this. Oh. Uh. That's a nice one. Oh, 
Connie's. <laughs> Connie's favorite. Not a big one. Not a giant, but a good one. I'm happy. We got a nice little buffer in the cooler, but now we did a run. Water looks way, way better. And these are some spots that we tend to do a little better on. So we actually, even though you're in the Bahamas, everyone, everyone thinks everything's right there. We just ran probably about 30 more miles or so. But hopefully it's worth it. We're gonna get in. We're looking for some bigger hogs here. I know Scott's gonna shoot a mutton because he always does. I don't get muttons. I go for the easy dumb hogs, but maybe a grouper. I really wanna find a big yellow jack. That'd be pretty good. Exclusive interview with Scott, what are you gonna get? Uh, I'm going all hog today. No, big mutton, you have to get oh. a mutton. All right, maybe a mutton. All right. This is a pretty cool clip. You can see Connie right there. She just shot a really solid hogfish and there it is flashing and she's pulling it up. Scott was looking for the other one and it kind of spooked when Connie shot it. Uh, and then I saw it off to the side. So once I saw no one else was pursuing it, I kind of got into hunting mode and started following this hogfish. Again, another one, a little bigger than my last one, but still another female hogfish. And it tucked up under the ledge, kind of just like the last one did, pretty much the same exact shot. And then he starts peeking out a little bit and got a really solid shot. I hit it a little high. If I hit this thing maybe like an inch lower or half an inch lower, it would have probably rolled it. Uh, but I didn't want to risk tearing out the fish from that softer head meat. So I swam down, pinned it against the bottom and got to swim up a nice solid hogfish. Deep drop. Good job, Connie. Yeah, girl. Hey, get down that yellow one. Hey, one of these guys come back. Coming. Hoggies! Oh, yeah. Connie got the big male. Oh, I got yeah. the smaller female. Oh, that's an eight. Real nice. Good ones. Oh, yeah. Let's go throw them in the box. Here's the fish that made the whole trip worth it for me. Now, generally speaking, mutton snapper are a lot harder to hunt than hogfish. They can be very skittish. They tend to just keep swimming away from you. So when I saw this massive mutton coming in, I thought there was no way I was going to get a shot on it. But we'll let you see how that played out. You can see I thumped that mutton hard with this gorilla sling. I hit him right in the rib cavity. So I think the flopper engaged inside the fish's ribs so it did not penetrate him all the way. I went to free spool with the gorilla sling and one of the advantages of having the reel is you can follow the line. You can see where he went. I was just praying he hold up and he did. He hold up right there. So I went back to the surface. I kind of breathed up. Then I went back down on this dive to kind of assess the situation and just hope he was still there. First thing I did was grab the spear, slid my hand down it, I felt the fish, and as soon as I could, I gave that spear a big push to kind of try to push it all the way through the fish and let that flopper engage on the other side of the fish, giving me a much better holding shot and let me start kind of pulling on it and try to work on this extraction. Again, I'm super out of breath here, adrenaline's running, I just did a dive and came back down almost right away. So I went to the surface, took a minute or two to breathe up, gain composure, and then it was time to go down for the extraction. Hang on, I, th I might be able to work him out. I just, I just pushed the spear and engaged it all the way through. Okay. I really need to try to land the fish on this dive. The longer it sits down there, the more chances you have of something going wrong, whether it's the fish tearing off, shark showing up, making the extraction more difficult, and you, everything just gets kicked up. You're pretty much blind. You're just going off what you can feel. I know the fish is on there. I'm trying to get a hand on the tail, but it's just a, a big tail, slippery. I couldn't really get a good grip on it. And between pulling on the tail and pulling on the spear, I was able to get him out and then uh, get him swimming up and really try to get a good grip on this fish. And that's when the game was over for this month. That's a giant! Oh, big butt! 
buttons. Watch out, Kelly. Oh. Oh, big buttons. Look at this button. I hit him right there, and I knew it was a solid shot, but I didn't think it came through. I still don't know if it did. So I went to like free school on the headhunter sling, and he looped big loop around, came back into the head. As soon as I could get a hand on that spear, I just jammed it all the way through. Ended up with a nice Bahama mutton. Connie got one in the mix too. I did, I did. Hers is right here. Not all about Joey's. Somewhere in here. It's up towards the bow. We'll show you that one later. But That's a nice one, Joey. I am nice pumped shot, on dude. that thing. Look at that. That thing's thick. I was proud to witness it. There you go. That's a good one. First Bahama spear fish for Casey. He made it count. From the surface, I could see some nice sized fish sitting under this ledge, and I wasn't sure if they were hogfish or what they were. So I went down to check it out. As I got down there, I could see they were white margates. Not really what we're looking for. They are a good eating fish, but that's just not what we're here for right now. So I let them swim, but while I was down there, I figured I'd check it out a little bit. And I had a nice little surprise waiting in this cave right here. Another nice mutton just kind of looking at me, turns around, I took a shot on him in the hole and got a really solid holding shot that I could kind of horse him up on the same dive. And anytime I can get a mutton, I'm excited. So to get two back to back was a pretty cool thing. Mutton coming in. Stuck on my finger. Well, I've boated some really nice fish so far. I still haven't got a big male hogfish, and that's really one of the fish we come here for, but that was about to change. You can see the currents ripping now. The fans are bent over. Look how fast the fish and myself are both gliding. But I lined up with the gorilla sling and let it fly. I aimed for just behind the gills. I didn't want to risk losing it. I shot a little far back, but got lucky with a spine shot and got a really, really nice male hogfish. This hogfish probably weighed around the 11 or 12 pound range. And that was going to be the fish that capped off my diving for the day. So one more decent hogfish and Casey swam down on it and he hit it really solid right behind the head. And I was down there just kind of watching his back, make sure no sharks came in or if they did to help fend them off. And that was going to be our last fish of the day. So now we'll show you what comes next. I think that is going to cap us off for diving, for now at least. A nice 10 pound hog or so. Look at that thing. It's a wrass. They eat all sorts of crustaceans. We're back at the Spanish K Marina and everyone's kind of getting back, getting ready for the tournament tomorrow and just kind of having fun. We got all our fish laid out right there. Look at the size of all these hogs. Some giant hogs. There's that big old mutton. That's the one I'm most proud of. But we got some nice muttons. Little grouper. Okay. Super fun day. We're gonna go ahead and clean these fish up, uh, give some away, eat some. Nothing goes to waste, and then we'll show you our pets. We got some pretty ferocious pets here. We're gonna be showing you in a minute. Giants. Laid a whole bunch of hogfish. We've been throwing them in as we go. And let's just show you what is waiting down here. The dock pets. It's gonna take a little bit to get them going. 